is Goritin actually underrated? I think she is. Because we are talking about people that have contributed much to this Chelsea side. Nobody mentions her name. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bro Talk. My name is NRM GBK Alexander, aka Simply Bro. On today's episode, we are going to talk about Chelsea women and Chelsea women alone. CFCW have been making us proud for the longest time, actually, from winning the league to winning back to back to back FA Cups and all the other trophies they've been winning, and not just the wins, but also the way they take on um, losses and just take it in their stride and move on, you know, and the way the unity of the team and everybody, <sighs> yeah. It's a good time to be a fan of Chelsea. Maybe not so much when you look at the men's team, but yeah, CFCW has been giving it to us. The Chelsea women took a significant stride towards the Women's Super League title with a hard-fought, confident 2 0 victory over Arsenal. The win puts Chelsea five points clear at the top of the table at least until Manchester United played and then cut the lead back to two points. So, yes, I thought we were winning the league, but that tiny minute winner, that was painful for Manchester United women. But, yeah, we know. I expected them to win. So I thought Manchester City would do us a favour, but then if wishes were horses, beggars, they say, we'll ride. So, we... Went into the match as favourites against us now, even though you know we've had not such a good time. Um, the last time we met them, yes, the county cup final, a match to forget. So, key event and highlight we asserted dominance from the get go. We forced Asna back into the half. Sam K thought she had given Chelsea an early lead, but her Cool was disallowed due to offside. <laughs> However, that did not even deter us. It wasn't long before we found the big breakthrough. If Perisette's loop ball found Guru written at the back post, who volleyed it into the bottom corner to give us the lead. That goal, when I, I was on Twitter, I was following the match, the update and everything. And immediately I saw that tweet, Guru, ah, I was elated. And I feel... Maybe it's time to have this conversation. Is Goritin actually underrated? I think she is. Because we are talking about people that have contributed much to this Chelsea side. Nobody mentions her name. I don't know why. And I know I am a big fan of Sam K. I'm a big fan of Lauren James. I'm a big fan of Frank Kirby and Hada. Yeah, let's leave that conversation until later. But why? Is it that nobody mentions written when we're talking about players like disrespect? Well, she has turned up in her time. Like whenever we needed a goal and then nobody's coming forth or the team is just playing normally because Sam K brings a lot to the team. And sometimes she's not scoring and she's not even providing assists, but her own is just causing problems and she's taking defenders away and everything. And then written is there at the right time to score. I actually think she is underrated. Yes. So it's no if nobody starting that conversation, I guess I have started it. So Arsenal, they try to respond. They try free the man up, drawing a reaction save from at Catherine Bagger. You know, I think she's one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Nothing. I know she is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Bagger and uh, 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 some of the outstanding saves she has made in, a, I think, the last three or four matches. The clean sheets we've kept in those matches have all been nice defense, um, defensive play and then having a rock-solid goalkeeper at the back. And that thing that we don't have. The women's team just have a lot of things that the men's team don't have. They don't have that striker that will turn up for you when you need it the most. You don't have that striker that will give you goals. 
you don't have partnership in the team where you say, oh, if these two people are on the pitch, it's almost telepathic. They don't have that. Then they don't have a goalkeeper, a rock, a well, not a rock now, a wall, a brick wall that you cannot go past. This is all about Chelsea. Today is all about Chelsea women. So I'm not going to dwell more on the things we are missing. Yeah, we'll have another episode for that. The hopes of Arsenal to come back were dashed when our departing captain, Magdalena Eriksen, poked the ball home following a free kick, making it 2-0. This marked a perfect farewell for the Swedish defender who will be leaving the club at the end of the season. Yes, now, so we'll come to and that point of conversation, Hada and Ericsson are both living. When I saw this news, I felt like crying. When I said I felt like, oh, I, I was almost in tears when I saw this. I was almost in tears. I still feel the pain now. I'm trying to behave as if I'm not feeling it. I still feel the pain. And uh, it's been there. The handwriting has been on the wall. We've had reports that they are leaving and everything. But now that it is official, we know that they are actually leaving. It's painful. And I'm happy that everything got that goal. Yeah, I'm really, really happy. Yeah. Mark Ribalina, our captain. And yeah, I will miss her. And then Ada. Of course, I. I was singing the praise of her that in the last episode and then getting this news. I thought, just look at it, Hada and Ke, we can use them both, then bring in Frank Ke, B, oh, we can mix this up. There's somehow, there's something that Emma Hayes should do, Emma Hayes is there, she can do something. In the game, there are just a few managers that are as, that are as good as her. When it comes to football managers, she will be able to bring in Hada and Sam K and Witten and Lauren James and Frank Kirby to play in one team. And then the news. I almost cried. I was almost in tears. How would you say sorry to, or not sorry now, goodbye to your captain and not just your captain, then also your striker, Yeah, I'm still, I'm still kind of pained about it. Well, yeah, let's move head on. One thing I know is that we are going to replace. We are going to replace. I thought we were going to miss G. We did not really miss her so much. So, yeah, so not, not saying that we are not going to miss Magdalena or Hada, but I'm just saying. We'll come through. We are Chelsea and we've done it before and we'll still do it again. We are, our final match of the season is against Reading. And for me, I think that's a win. I think that's a win. That's the type of matches we should be winning. And I know we are going to win. But we actually need just a draw. I don't think we'll play for a draw. I don't think Emma Hayes. Emma Hayes monsters. Mentality monsters will come out and play. We'll play. We are going to get our hands on our fourth straight um, WSL title. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I've never been more sure of any other thing before. Yeah. So let's not start celebrating yet, but it's due. We will just in time. Just calm down. Just calm down. It's going to happen. It can only be delayed, but it cannot be denied. And with this, we've come to the end of this episode. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite listening platform and follow me on social media for more news and updates, Chelsea updates. 
at Simply Broad on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok, even on YouTube. You can watch this episode on YouTube. It's available as an audiogram on YouTube. So you can watch it. So Broad Talk is a podcast on YouTube too. So in case you don't know, or in case you did not know, you now know. Until next time, keep the blue flag flying high.